Hi, Chad here from Purple Collar Life. If this is your first time watching us, thank you for joining us. If you've watched us for years, thanks for coming back. In today's video, we're gonna do a summer maintenance check on our Honda EU 3000 IS generator. Now this generator I've owned since 2008, so it's not like I just got this thing. I've had it a long time. And we've used it each summer to power the camper. A lot of times when we're camping, when we're RVing, we're in spots that do not have electricity. So we use a combination of our solar panels and the generator to power the camper. Even when we're traveling across country, a lot of times I just have the generator in the bed of the truck. If we have to stop overnight somewhere, it's nice to just be able to turn the generator on real quick, run the microwave, cook something to eat, and then get back to traveling or get to sleep. So this has been a great investment, no regrets here. I think in 2008, I paid around 18 or $1,900 for it. Great generator, I can't say enough great things about this because not only is it convenient, but it's super quiet. So it's not you know, obtrusive when you're camping near someone, it's not overly loud. I wanna to talk to you today about a couple of things we're gonna do. First of all, obviously, each summer you should change the oil before using it. We got this whole kit, and I'll put a link down below in the description to this Amazon kit that includes the oil, the filter, the air filter, and the new spark plug. I think it's great when sellers kit those things together so it's just one click for me to buy everything I need to get this ready for summer. There are a couple other things I am gonna be doing this year. This thing sits out in the sun a lot when we're camping. If it's in the back of the truck with the fifth wheel, obviously the fifth wheel prevents me from having the tonneau cover ro rolled back so the, the generator's in the sun a lot. You can see our plastic's kind of faded here. It doesn't look very new and our paint is starting to fade also. Sides still look nice and red, but the top is a little faded. So what we're gonna do about that after we do our oil change is we'll do some Meguiar's Quick Detailer and a coat of cleaner wax to give a good protective coating on that paint. You can see I've got the generator in the back of the Polaris Ranger. That gives me a good working surface to do this oil change. Uh, hopefully you have someone like I have Jennifer to help you lift it into the back of the Ranger. This is not a lightweight generator. Um, I can still lift it by myself into the bed of the truck, but it's a struggle. It's a lot better on your back and your body if you can have someone else help you out. They grab one side handle, you grab the other side handle, and it's pretty easy to lift up in here. You can see that by placing it in the back of the Polaris Ranger, I get a little bit of a slope here towards the oil drain side. You can just go ahead and take that cover off. And let's talk about the tools you'll need for this process. So obviously the oil change, you're probably gonna want to get the Honda Genuine Oil or it's included in that kit. So again, I'll put that Amazon affiliate link down below. If you are interested in buying that kit of the oil, the air filter and the spark plug, I'd appreciate if you use that link. It won't cost you any more through Amazon, but it will give me credit for sending you to Amazon to make the purchase. Tools you'll need. A couple funnels, I'll show you why I use two. A 10 millimeter socket or 10 millimeter gear wrench a little bit of dielectric tune-up grease, spark plug gap, and a, and a 13 16 socket wrench, uh, spark plug wrench is preferred. Now I've actually done the oil change portion of this previously on the channel. I think it was our eighth video ever made about two years ago in June of 2000. I like to loosen up my oil fill cap you can see with a little bit of a grade there, we're already gonna start leaking. And that is what my funnel is for, is to catch the oil as it comes out. This oil is not in horrible shape, but I still like to change it every single summer. And I use a funnel just to direct the flow down into my oil pan underneath there. I'm making quite a mess here. So you wanna use your 10 millimeter socket and remove that little drain plug. Now, if you've been running the generator, you wanna let that oil cool down so you're not burning your fingers. And I am at a little bit of a slope here coming out of the back of the Ranger, so that will help drain. But you can see it drains into this little rubber gasket, and then it's helpful to have the funnel here to drain it down into the pan. If you get it lined up right, you can just drain it straight into the pan. There will be less than one full quart in there, so you don't have to worry about catching too much. You can see here that setting on the tailgate, there is a little bit of an angle to the generator. That's what's helping it drain down. So obviously when we fill the generator, we wanna slide it forward so that it's level in the bed. 
so that we can get a good gauge on how much oil we're putting in there. If we filled it with that little bit of an angle, it would be low on oil once it was level. So we're pretty much done draining. I've got an old rag here. Just want to wipe off the end of that. Make sure we have our washer on it. That's important. And then reinsert that drain plug. Now you'll see this is going to keep dripping for a while. There's like a nice rubber sleeve here that that drips out of. So I'm going to leave my oil pan down below just to catch those last few drips. And if I spill anything. Now to refill, I'm going to set my rag down underneath here. Put the dipstick on it. Use a long neck funnel so that I can angle it upright and pour my clean oil in there. I've actually got a little bit of a quart left from the last time I did this, so I'm going to go ahead and use that first. And like I said, it will not take the full quart, so we'll start out using this first. You don't want to overfill this with oil, but you don't have to worry too much of that because it kind of won't let you. You want to fill up to the threads of the dipstick. So obviously once you're over the threads, it's going to start draining out. It would be difficult to overfill. We've got our new one. This is again the Honda Genuine Oil 10W30 is what's recommended in our climate and with our use. Every once in a while you can pull the funnel out just to check and see how close you are to those threads. We are not yet close. There is no oil filter in this generator, so you want to make sure your funnel is nice and clean. I know the outside of this one looks dirty, but I have wiped the inside down. You can see why it's a good idea to have that rag underneath, though, because just as I'm checking it, a lot of times I drip. And I am now up to the threads, perfect level. Go ahead and put our dipstick back in here. Same with it, you don't need to go crazy tightening it, just a little bit of a turn once it's in there. Then I like to take my rag, you know this is still got some oil in it, kind of wipe this area out. You can see from sitting in the back of the truck, you know stuff, that, stuff sometimes does scrape up against this but this generator has held up really well. No idea how many hours are on this. There are no hour meters on these, but you know, we've camped a lot of days each summer. We've taken some long trips across the country to Yellowstone, Mount Rushmore from Northwest Pennsylvania. Those are long trips. We've gone down to Tennessee. And in every time we've hauled the camper, we've taken the generator with us on those long trips. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the generator to the side here. Use our flat blade screwdriver, open the side. Now our spark plug is under here and our air filter is here. We're going to go ahead and do the spark plug first. Right here is our spark plug boot. Go ahead and pull that off. And we'll use our 13 sixteenths spark plug socket you see the spark plug socket nice has that nice silicone boot in it that'll keep a hold of the spark plug i originally brought my six inch extension but the angle is too great for that to work so another option would be no extension but i've got barely any room you could use a shorter extension like this one or if you've never seen these before these flexible extensions work nice too you can go ahead and Give yourself plenty of working space. You can see these have a pretty long thread on them. And this one was ready to be changed. Just not horrible, but it's been in there for a year. And again, I don't know how many hours that is, but quite a few as much as we camp without electricity. You can see these are an NGKR number BPR5ES. And when you buy that kit all together, it is a Honda Genuine Parts NGK spark plug. 
BPR5ES, and there's the Honda part number. So here's our new spark plug compared to the old. You can see, other than being in much better condition, they're identical. One thing I like to do before I put the spark plug in is check the gap. We want to be at about 0 0.030, which is exactly where we are. And then you put your spark plug inside your spark plug wrench. Get yourself lined up down there. I like to turn it backwards just a little bit. Make sure we're not cross threading. And then we should be, once we feel it kind of click, we should be in good shape screwing it in. Now remember these are long threads so it does take a little bit of time. You want to make sure you get that spark plug all the way seated. What I like to do is once I feel it getting tight, I turn it a quarter to a half a turn more and that should be good. That's going to get hot in there and you don't want to get it so stuck that you can't get it out. The next thing I like to do is put just a little dab of dielectric grease into the boot. Keeps things lubricated in there. Makes it a little bit easier to pull that boot off the next time. Can keep this old spark plug just for emergencies, but usually I keep a spare brand new one on hand. Get our spark plug cover lined back up here. There's a little tab you want to make sure you get inserted at the top. And then screw the bottom in. You'll know if you haven't done it right if when you pull at the top it comes out. So there we're good. The next thing we want to replace or check is our air filter. Right here is the Honda part number. And to get to that there are two clips down here at the bottom. Two clips up here at the top. And you can just pull the front of that off. There is a pre-filter in here, so you want to give that a look. Sometimes I blow it out with the air compressor. It's actually not looking too bad. And remember, it's just a pre-filter before the main filter. Pay attention to how this comes out before you take it out. You can even line your new one up if you want to. I like to go ahead and put my new one in right away. But you can see even my old one after a year of use, you know, it's a little dusty, but it's not horrible. Probably could leave it in there another year, but when you buy the whole kit, it's nice to just do everything at once so you know the machine is ready to go. And then we'll just put this back on. Being careful when we put it back in here to line that pre-filter up. I like to snap the bottom one first to hold it in. And then the two top ones. While well, I've got this open, I usually just like to do a little visual inspection. You can see there's the carburetor, not leaking anything. You want to be careful with these that you don't ever create a leak. I know some people on some videos will tell you to remove. There's a little sediment bowl back here at the bank, back of the fuel tank. I've never done that. I've never had any issues with water separation or debris being in there. So I just like to leave that nice and tight and not chance the fuel vapor or the fuel drips that could come from removing something like that inside this body of the generator. Now I can go ahead and close this door back up. And that part of our summer service is done. It was quick and easy. It took probably less than 10 minutes if I wasn't videoing. Now like I said, this sits in the back of the truck a lot. In wintertime, it sits in the garage, so you can see it's got a good coat of dust on it. What I like to do is take some quick detailer. And this is the Meguiar's quick detailer. I use this stuff on the boats, use it on obviously the generator. And I just take an old towel. You can see we got a decent amount of dirt off of there. Now this doesn't look horrible, but I can tell that it's faded. So what I want to do is 
take an applicator pad. I'm just going to pour a little bit of water from a water bottle onto it. Kind of squeeze it in there. Shake up my Meguiar's cleaner wax. That amount is probably enough for about three generators. It just came out really fast. So we'll start applying some on the front, on the top. I try not to get this on the plastic, but it does get on the plastic sometimes when you're applying it. Do circles just like you were waxing your car. It's such a small amount of paint that I do all three sides at once. Just the red painted areas. And I go ahead and do the cap, the fuel fill cap. And we'll let that dry for two or three minutes. After a few minutes that should be dry. We're just going to go ahead and use a microfiber towel. And wipe that off. And that should improve the color a little bit, but it should mainly give another layer of protection on there for this year's sunlight. Those UV rays are damaging to the paint and the plastic. So that extra coat of wax will certainly help. I can see a difference already. And the last thing I want to do is this SC1. You can see it says magic spray makes the world shiny. Use this on my uh, XT250 dirt bike. Keeps it really clean. It's been used on the Polaris Ranger here. Keeps things nice. So this is for the plastic surfaces. So I'll go ahead and use my dust towel here. Just make sure that I've got all these plastic surfaces wiped down. And then I'm really impressed with how this stuff works. Split, spray it directly on. It says to let it sit for 60 seconds. Let it work into the plastic there. Then we'll go ahead and wipe it. And as always, I'm amazed with how well that works. Huge improvement on that plastic. We'll try to pay closer attention on this side. Look how faded, sun faded that area is, this area. We'll take a before picture. We'll do the same thing on this side, just a little spray. Let it sit for 60 seconds. It also smells good. Yeah, I'm seeing quite a difference there. I'm hopeful you can see it on the camera. There is a pull start option if the battery doesn't work, but we'll turn the ignition on, pull the choke out, turn the fuel valve back to run, and then when I start, I turn the eco throttle off for the starting. Don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is running. 
so quiet. Huge difference after using that SC1 on the plastic surfaces. I may end up doing that multiple times a summer because I think it does beautify and protect that plastic. I'll add this stuff along with that tune-up kit in the descriptions down below for Amazon affiliate links. Eco throttle, it's really quiet. 